So moving on to our next movie, Bullet Train, uh, coming out around first week of August or so. Starring Brad Pitt, Joey King, Aaron J Taylor Johnson, Hiro uh, Hiro Yuki Sanada, Bad Bunny, and Karen Fukuhara. Don't forget Pi Brian Tyrese Henry, or Tyrese. That's Henry. what I was gonna get, yeah, I got there, I got there. <laughs> oh yeah. man, the dad in uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, I know, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, you know, I was okay, gonna good. get there. And Zazzy right. Beats as well. Oh my god, yeah, this movie taking place in Japan on a bullet train. The Japanese forward for it only because I have to is Shinkansen, which is awesome. Um, yeah, just a bunch of assassins. What a are, cast. A, a great cast, first of all, with everyone, even those weird cameos that we got. Yeah, exactly. A <laughs> um, little spoiler if you haven't seen it. There's three cameos, celebrity cameos, with um, Channing Tatum, Ryan Reynolds, and Sandra Bullock. Definitely. Like, yeah. Out of the blue for no reason. Never expected it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, plot of the whole movie, pretty much couple assassins taking pl are essentially getting on this bullet train and all their plots kind of have their own lineup but then they all get interconnected somehow which is i think really cool yeah this movie was very fast paced i thought towards the end it had really good action i wasn't hooked immediately right in the beginning mm -hmm. i don't know if it was because you were thrown right into it and there was like no build-up because, like, you know, a typical movie, you have the build-up, and then you have the exposition, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. You know, this movie, is like, start with the exposition and then build up throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. And then, but with a formula like that, you're relying heavily on the ending to kind of wrap up all the stories. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel like this movie did the best job at wrapping up everyone's stories. Um, there were once, a couple plot holes for sure. Yeah. yeah, but once this movie started to get going, like I saw this movie so many times, this trailer so many times, and to see how this like the the shots in the trailer were literally like the first thirty minutes of the movie. Yeah, that was really cool because like it was at least it wasn't exposing the whole plot of the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Which cool. I hate yeah. when trailers do that because then it just ruins the whole movie experience for me. So it, like you said, it does give at least the first 30, 45 minutes of the movie and like that little trailer, so none of it was really exposed to. It was a little slow at the beginning, but because you had to learn, because I think we were only focusing on that one plot line of I think it was the son and they're trying to figure out who pushed who caused the son to be in that hospital. And then that's how he got into the train and trying to figure out who this person is because they gave, they think it said like the seat number where that person See, is. I didn't think the movie was, I didn't think the beginning was slow. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was slow to build up. Yeah, it Does just took time. Sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because like right off the bat, you saw, what is it, the twins, you know, mm -hmm. Tangerine and Lemon bantering like within the first 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. like, and the way they talk, very fast paced, very Br very British also. Yeah, very Tarantino like. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've seen Tarantino movies, but mm -hmm. very fast paced, quick. Camera work is very like edit, quick edit, enough. edit very very fast. Mm. So it's trying to like really like get you going and stuff. I just I didn't feel like I, like that was working as I well. See. Yeah, because it was such a hard like way to like interconnect everything first, especially at the beginning, like you said, because we're focusing on one plot line then it jumps to another new character that we're getting introduced to then we got to follow that new plot line and then throughout the whole movie it kind of like changes into like oh here's this character that we get introduced to now we got to look into their whole backstory of why they're being pushed mm -hmm. into this train here like bad bunny for example bad bunny's character um i think he was the wolf we saw brad pitt trying to leave the train and then we see bad uh the wolf being introduced and then we have to go back to why he's coming into this plot of the movie so it was a lot of weird transitions and mix-ups with everything, but I think it was still trying to get worked out well. The only one whose flashbacks felt like they play paid off was the twins. It did, yes. Um, they focused probably like a good seven to eight minutes on the wolf's black background, and mm -hmm. then he was killed in two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that happened a lot, though, with like everyone's introduction it, like yeah the wolf. yeah like the same thing with like the hornet you yeah know, as he beats his character so i think that was funny but... i just think it was funny like you said like yeah we get introduced them then like two minutes later just die out of no reason yeah <laughs> like, what the hell this happened? movie okay so this may be a stretch remember lewis and ant-man yeah you know how he tells a story mm -hmm. that's what this oh, entire movie felt like oh okay like a giant like fast-paced like movie. talking like yeah. a summary of everything and how stories just jumped from one thing to another yeah. so fast mm -hmm. that's i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but that's like 
like my immediate thought when I saw I this see. movie. I guess it's like a way of do you like those type of movies where it's like those type of plot lines. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of similar to like I'm not sure if you see it like Murder on the Orient Express. No, I haven't. It's kind of like those detective movies. Yeah. But now this is more focused on like assassin plot lines and how each assassin is connected to each other and how it kind of relates with each other as well. Mm -hmm. And like Murder on Orient Express, everyone has their own kind of storyline. And yet it kind of relates to, oh, this is how this person died or how they have that connection to this person. Kind of has like those type of feelings with it. Mm -hmm. Or like any like those detective movies. Like Knives Out is probably another good example as well. Ooh great movie mm -hmm. <laughs> but like kind of has that similar plot line yeah. but like very different aspect with it yeah yeah i can agree to that for mm -hmm. sure did you i like the culture in this movie it was mm -hmm. really fun i was glad we got to see a little bit off of the train um some of the i thought it was just cool to see like the village at the end or like the very beginning of like the city life mm -hmm. of tokyo i think it was tokyo right? yeah tokyo yep. and then they went all the way down to, all the way over to kyoto yep kyoko and um kyoto Kyoto. My apologies. <laughs> um, but yeah, I liked how Staying Alive was uh, in the Japanese. Whole, it was in Japanese. I loved that song. <sighs> I think that was great because in, it was only in English for the trailer, so mm -hmm. then they changed it up a little bit. There was a lot of other songs that were in um, English songs and then dubbed in Japanese, but I can't remember the other ones. But oh, really? Yeah, a lot of music throughout this whole uh, movie was yeah, awesome as well. It has an awesome style to it. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's got a lot of like action and gore and stuff, but it does not take itself seriously. You know, no. You could, you can see 100% like these actors are having a fun time with it. The only backstory I wish we got more was uh, Brad Pitt's character, Ladybug. Like, mm -hmm. I felt like his Pitt. character was so pushed to the side, mm -hmm. even though he was supposed to be, like, our main character. Um, I felt like the twins were more important than he was. They were the more main characters compared to Brad Pitt's and character. And it kind of stinks because yeah. I liked Brad Pitt's characters. And uh, don't get me wrong, I love the twins. But everyone else's characters, I, I didn't really care. I, I did not like Prince. What is it? No. Is that, that mm -hmm. Joey King's character. I, I just think that was a dumb, weird mm -hmm. character. She was sadistic for sure, but like, it wasn't really I just make, made my eyes roll because like, we've seen it. Like, this isn't nothing new. Mm -hmm. The wolf, I mean, he's dead in two minutes, so not much to say. I just thought it was funny. He, it's Bad Bunny also. Yeah, so I know. really famous. <laughs> I know, exactly. And he's going to be in another movie soon for Sony with the yeah. Spider-Man wrestling mm -hmm. bullshit. <laughs> forgot about that yeah oh but i think like a lot of this movie had some great comedy though i like i was laughing my butt off and towards the end of the movie had some great action too it did uh the whole action scenes with like you know ladybug the elder uh, all trying to fight the yakuza or whoever that's trying to save the sun or something like that mm -hmm. like those action scenes were amazing then the crash of the bullet train as well mm -hmm. at the end yeah oh, just awesome. seeing him fl seeing ladybug fly through i think it was kind of similar to what happened in like deadpool where it kind of flew through that. <laughs> so, get this. He also directed Deadpool 2. That's what I thought, yeah. I think I read something like that, yeah. Yeah, so, like, it's literally, like, the same exact scene. <laughs> and that's why probably because... Hornet's also in it as well. Yeah, because... <laughs> so, in the movie in Deadpool, like, Domino lands on this fluffy, squishy thing. And then in this movie, Ladybug lands on the, the mascot. Character. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's kind of funny. And this is the same director. Yeah, ironic. Yes, Yikes. I guess it's like a director trait. You know, every, Can dire be. every director has their own trait, though. You got to see. Is it a trait or is it lazy? Now that's the question. I'm no, I think it's a trait. Think so? Okay. Yeah, I think so because like I know Quentin Tarantino has son. Wes Anderson probably has something like that. Hans Zimmer as well. Hans Zimmer has like the whole you know the face being the whole picture of the movie, mm -hmm. and then like, you see him fade out or whatever. I'm not sure if you noticed that. I've noticed it a lot. I don't know. <laughs> I feel. I feel. Mm -hmm. No, I think... Yeah, I thought the action was really fun. I thought the comedy was pretty good. I, I found myself laughing quite a bit. And, you know, I did take this movie seriously, and you should not take this movie seriously. Like, turn off your brain, get ready to laugh, and just have a fun time. Because it is a fun film. Mm -hmm. I do I do have fun with it, you know. I, I didn't think... I thought, Yes, I have some issues with it, but, like, overall, I thought it was a decent like b movie as well like a good action movie that mm -hmm. i could see myself watching again in the future because mm -hmm. this was like about a two-hour movie also yeah mm -hmm. yeah so the cameos which is kind of funny channing tatum i think that was hilarious <laughs> that was my favorite cameo all <laughs> and it's funny though because him and sandra bullock um started a movie earlier this year called yeah. the lost city mm -hmm. which brad pitt had a cameo in it oh but get this this movie 
um, Bullet Train actually started production before that movie. Oh, really? So the reason why Brad Pitt was in The Lost City, mm -hmm. if this is making sense, um, Channing Tatum and Bo um, Sandra Bullock loved working with Brad Pitt on The Bullet Train oh. pr production that they invited on him on to have a role for the lost city mm, okay. so that and then the lost city came out first now everyone's thinking it's like the other way around but it's actually the bullet train came first and, and then, then they lost city. so i think that's a really cool idea mm -hmm. and then brett uh ryan reynolds you know ryan reynolds playing ryan reynolds mm -hmm. even if in a two second clip like, yeah. as soon as i saw his face and his little smile i was mm -hmm. like this is fucking Every character he plays in every movie. Well, also, this happened in Deadpool 2, where Brad Pitt made a cameo yes, in it. Yes, exactly. And that's when Brad Pitt died. He was like, some, I think he was the Invisible Man or yeah. something like that. Then he got electrocuted and died. So then you see, um, in Bullet Train, you see Ryan Reynolds make a cameo for like, what, two, three seconds yeah. or something? And then he just leaves it off. I think stuff. it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. It was so funny. So like, as they were slowly like revealing cameos throughout the movie... I thought for sure, like, the white depth, because they never showed the white depth space. Mm -hmm. I was like, watch, it's going to be, like, some, like, Ryan Reynolds bullshit. Mm. Like, that's what came to my head. And then... Oh, because it was, like, yeah. Yeah, because I saw, I saw cameos coming. I was like, who who is the person that always fucking shows up in everything now? Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. Yeah. I mean, look at him. He had a role in uh, Hobbs and Shaw. Remember yeah. that? I remember Detective Pikachu. Yeah, like, <laughs> he's just, he's everywhere now, which is funny because, mm -hmm. like, I mean, of course, everyone loves him. But I just, like, I'm like, I could see him showing up in this movie. And then, of course, like, the White Death was revealed to be, like, um, what's his name? Shannon. Oh, Michael Shannon. Yeah, Michael Shannon. Um, and then five minutes later you get the reveal of like carter being ryan reynolds on, and i was like tapping my girlfriend I'm like i called it <laughs> <laughs> so i, I was know. freaking out because i was like i knew it was happening it's just ryan reynolds in general he I just know. makes random cameos everywhere surprised if you make a cameo in multiverse of madness yeah yeah we won't go into that <laughs> <laughs> you like the comedy though in this movie right? oh yeah you i love the comedy time? yeah i love the comedy with it especially that um when we first got introduced to Tangerine and Lemon, they had their whole debate of like how many people they killed. Yes, and it was like, awesome. so, and it was all just showing the montage of them people dying. And it was also funny. It was a fourth wall break as well. Mm -hmm. Like I haven't really seen any shows or movies yet um, that do like fourth wall breaks in modern times now. I mean, if, and you haven't watched. I mean, She Hulk is not yeah, doing it, but I mean that just came out honestly yesterday, to be yeah, honest. Exactly. <laughs> but other than that, I feel like it's such a nice modern take just to see something doing fourth wall breaks, and also uh, the twin story was just really awesome. And we got, I feel like I learned. I think we said it earlier. We learned a lot more from the twins compared to Brad Pitt's character. I like the twins is like just chemistry and how mm -hmm. they interacted with everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, the Thomas the Choo Choo thing. Yeah, I just, think that was funny. Like yeah. probably some people thought that was dumb. I thought it was funny, and I didn't think it took away from the movie too much. I feel like it makes sense because, like he said, like I, I think it was Tangerine or Le Lemon's yeah. character who relates with Thomas the Tra yeah. Thomas the Train Engine or Tank Engine or whatever. Like, they each have, like, their own personal personalities, and he wants to link each train with each person he runs into. I think uh, Ladybug's bad luck was, like, the funniest thing to me. It did. It had to make sense, yeah. though. Yeah, I think, like, you know, the suitcase opening. <laughs> Literally the suitcase opening, and it was, like, like, panties or whatever. Bite, yeah. Or, But, like, like, he got lucky that he injected himself with the I antidote. Know, exactly. Or I think it was funny with the whole, like, oh, he found the manual for the book. It goes flying, and just... <laughs> It's a bunch of dumb stuff that, like, probably a lot of people don't laugh at, but I just think it's hilarious. It's just like it has to be. And, like, I think that was his reputation regardless yeah, as yeah, the assassin. Yeah, yeah, bad luck. He, mm -hmm. he takes everyone's bad luck, you mm -hmm. know, the elders, wisdom on him. Yeah. All right, Kyle, I got some fun facts for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing a little research on the bullet train. Um, so it looks like taking a train from tokyo to kyoto will take you two hours and eight minutes it does which mm -hmm. is the exact runtime of this film oh did you know that i did that's not know pretty that. cool sure. i think that's awesome um this movie was also based on a japanese novel called is, maria yeah. Be maria beetle i'm not going to pronounce that author's name will definitely get butchered uh published back in 2010 so it's not too old mm. and yeah sandra bullock's character actually is like 
what is it? I think in the tit- in end credits scene, her character's name is Maria Beetle, which has the same name as the novel. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Um, Sandra Bullock replaced Lady Gaga in this film. Yep. Lady Gaga was supposed to be Maria Beetle. That would be cool. That would have been. But her, I think she had scheduling conflicts with House of Gucci. Mm. Um, yeah. And then David Leach. Did you know he was the former stunt double of Brad Pitt? He was? Yep. He <laughs> started, he was the stunt double for Brad Pitt and like movies like Fight Club, Troy, Ocean's Eleven, and then he kind of broke off and directed his own movies, Atomic Blonde, mm. Deadpool 2, and now we got this. I think he was a co-director for John Wick. Oh, okay. So I definitely felt some similarities yeah, with this one. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and he also played, he also made a cameo on this movie as well, and he was the 17th victim in uh, Tangerine and Lemon's story. Oh. The one that got hit by a... Was it the car? Yeah, yeah, and it got blown up. Oh god, I forgot about that. And then lastly, I thought this was a funny um, fun fact as well. The combination of the brief briefcase is eight zero five. What's that date? Oh, that's the release date. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So, uh, also another little tidbit, but yeah, just some fun stuff to kind of think about. And I guess Aaron Taylor Johnson had like. Part of his hand was like chipped off and he was injured during a stunt for this film. Oh, and man. Sony liked him so much in this movie is why he was brought on to the Craven the Hunter movie, mm-hmm. I mean, supposedly. Oh. Um, but yeah, I thought a lot of the actors did a great job in this mm-hmm. movie and I did have some fun. Yeah. I don't, so I don't have a whole lot of words to say, but mm-hmm. I think for the most part, you, you'll you probably like it more than you would hate it. Mm-hmm. I think like a summary throughout this whole movie is like you said, it's a nice, cool plot. Very many plots being woven together mm-hmm. to find out the end objective of this of this movie, and especially being taken place in Japan, it's something way different than what we've been yeah. exposed and to. It's in the got past. a unique style to it. It does with the comedy and mm-hmm. with the comedy along with the action on top of it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is also a more modern take than like a more twenty twenty mm-hmm. take compared to like other movies that Definitely. we've seen way in the past. Um, that is what I love more about this movie. Um, yeah, cinemat- it's definitely more modernized because you could see with like the whole mascot and how like the mm-hmm. mascot was portrayed, or even just alone that um, that train cart that just focused on that mascot. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like the whole yeah, this is the mascot for all of Japan essentially, yeah. which is funny. And you, you, I was, is that I was, mascot was, real? No, it's not a real mascot. Oh, okay. I think it's just related to to, to the just the uh, okay, okay. main plot of the I movie. I thought itself. about it for a second. But... I wish it was. I mean, I feel like that could have they could have done it, but yeah. nah, they probably had to just make this whole new animation character for it. Karen Fuka, Fuka, Fukuhara. Yeah. yeah, she made it in this film. Did mm-hmm. you see that? Yeah, I saw that. And I was the like, boys. Hey, yeah, let's go. I was literally about to get to there. I was like, wait, she looks familiar, and then it clicked. Like, oh. Oh, shit she's from the boys i'm like yeah what the hell? it's funny because she's such a badass in the boys and she does nothing i was gonna say movie. that like why did i wish she did why she wasn't she, she in the assassin action. yeah like, i know that would have made so more perfect. sense yeah i was like damn and then she gets killed but i think the mask <laughs> did she end up getting killed i think she got killed oh yeah. my gosh <sighs> uh and there was that one character the train conductor i don't know if you ever saw the show heroes Oh yeah, I've seen Heroes. He was the the Asian guy that can stop time. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. His name was okay. Yeah, his ha- name was Hiro Nakamura, in in the show Heroes. But he was awesome, you know. Uh, I loved it. Peter Petrelli trying to save the time. Like I used to love Heroes. I watched that show a lot. Oh, have yeah, you? Yeah, I haven't watched Heroes sadly. Masioka, I think his name. Masi mm-hmm. mostly. Masioka, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Or Matt Parkman. Yeah, yeah. I always. But yeah, Heroes was a good show. Yeah. I liked it. I think I tried watching Heroes, but then I stopped it. <laughs> I, I I think the first season's very solid, and mm-hmm. then I think season four is also pretty decent. But then the rest are kind of like up in the air and get a little weird. Mm-hmm. So Kyle, what would you rate this movie out of ten? I would probably rate this at a eight or eight and a half. Probably eight and a half, to be honest with this one. Yep, see, yep, I, I saw that one go. <laughs> yeah, only I, like like I said, like it's a film that is taking place in Japan because I love Japan. Yeah. Don't quote me for that. Well, hate me if you hate me. I don't care. All the action scenes were amazing. I loved the little montage scene, montage scene uh, with Tangerine and Lemon killing their victims. The whole ending scene as well, mm-hmm. them fighting the people at the end of the at the end of the train, the whole trail derailment or bullet train derailment also was really fun and cool. And then all the new cameos that we got from Channing Tatum, Sandra Bullock, Ryan Reynolds, seeing Karen Fukuhata from the boys was really cool to see. It's just fun to see everyone. All these actors, you know, from Mm -hmm. like superhero films, 
Because if you think about it, I mean, you have Quicksilver mm-hmm. and an Eternar twin yeah. in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just cool to see all these people who you know from superhero films, like thrown into an entire different movie, different style, mm-hmm. different action. And you appreciate that a little bit more. You do. And like it's, I feel like it's been a lot better with these actors compared to like, sadly, with uh, the other actors like, you know, um, Chris Evans in The Gray Man. Yeah. It was kind of different. Hey, Knives Out was good. Knives Out was good. Don't get me wrong with that. But what the, that was, yeah. Knives Out was or like came Cherry. Out, yeah. Or Cherry. Russo Brothers. Sadly. Coming yes. after you. No. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, Chris Hemsworth and um, the other uh, Netflix yeah. movie. But he had a Extraction. And that was extraction good. was fun. Yeah, I've heard that was decent. Yeah, but, that was good. Mm-hmm. But like seeing like Aaron Taylor Johnson. Um, Brian Tyree Henry. Brian Ty- Yep. I can't pronounce it again. <laughs> um, but yeah, those two just coming from MCU movies, being placed in this other movie that just seeing them that they can act way mm-hmm. better, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's funny. I um, Yeah, a fun movie, I would say, for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I think I would give it a 7 out of 10. Okay. So a pretty generic store, score, I would say. But um, like I said, I had fun with it. Mm-hmm. I had a good time with it. When, you know, I did have some issues with it, but I didn't really let that like hold me down to enjoy in this movie mm-hmm. so um i i was laughing my butt off i had a fun time and i probably would see it again if mm-hmm. it was like on hbo max or something i'll yeah. throw it on in the background for sure oh do, same for me yeah. <laughs> yeah i'll probably watch in the background i also like the music so i gotta listen to yeah. some of that music yeah. later definitely know? 